Hi everybody, it's Matt from trailbreak.com. I wanted to bring you another quick video here. Um, I recently received an email with a request for video and Jeff asked me if I could show how to make a GPS map that showed brake start and finish points and also do it with speed, steering, throttle position, um, and some of those things. And he said he only has a solo two. So he only has the GPS positions. So right away, if we only have a solo two, we can only do these things with the sensors and the information we receive. So we wouldn't be able to do it necessarily with steering and throttle position, but we can certainly do it with lateral G, which will give us a good indication of what's going on with steering and speed. And while Jeff didn't ask about um, brake position, we'll be able to do the same thing with longitudinal G that'll give us an idea of throttle position maybe and give us an idea about brake position. And we'll be able to see if the car was accelerating or decelerating. So let's jump in here. I have Race Studio 2 up. I have some of my data from my driving at a track called Club Motorsports. A really fabulous, fun track with some great elevation here in New Hampshire. Um, the graph we have up, we can see it's a speed trace. It tells us right here it's a GPS speed up and down as the track goes, and we have our track map. Um, the GPS track map, and I'm going to bring this up and make it a little bit bigger for us, is we see right now, it's the rainbow graph, it's colored with things, and we can see that it's listed as the GPS speed. If we want to change the measures that are on this graph, we can go and do it with a right with clicking on the, the rainbow portion over here on the left-hand side, and when we do that, we get our full channel list. We can then color this graph with anything we want. So say we want to start Jeff's question about um, steering position. We don't have a steering position if you only have a Solo 2 because there's no connection to the car. We just get GPS info. But if we color this for lateral acceleration, and we're going to let it go as a smooth graph, we're not going to put it to bands or use any of our options. We say apply and exit. We now have a map that shows us from plus approximately 1.4 g's to minus 1.4 g's so if we look the track direction here is clockwise if we look and we say this is a the first turn is a right hand turn and it's as we hover over it says it's 1.17 g's and we see that matches on the left where we get our rainbow graph so as we go through and we look, we can see the G-forces we get. So while not a steering position, we can start to zoom in and use our track map. And I'm just zooming in on this graph here. And as we look and we get down in here, we can go over and see we're at just about 0.1 G. So that's, that's pretty close to zero. There's not too much steering in the car. There's not too much turning. As, as it starts to increase, I'd say now me as a driver has some steering input going in here um, certainly when we get to 0 0.5 0 0.6 and we get the cars making over a full g of cornering 1.1 g's at this point the car is doing some real turning the driver's got a lot of input but when we go back and we look at a spot that has maybe 0 0.1 um, 0 0.0 something the driver might not be turning much it might be the shape of the track it might be a little bit of the camber in the track but not too much going on and we could do the same thing and, and come down if we go through the track we can find a left hand corner and we can zoom in and look at this and go if here we have 0.08 g's we don't have too much lateral acceleration going on and as you come down and you approach the corner it starts to go more and more negative for a left hand corner and we can say certainly at point four seven minus point four seven g's the driver's got a lot of steering going in there um, something we could probably do let's give this a try if we go back in and we want to make some bands in our graph and maybe we do the bands and we specify um the width and we say the minimum is all the way down at 1.34 and we it's Picking that, we could put any value in that we want. Maybe we say the width is, let's try maybe point, uh, three. Oh, we got a three, point three. And we apply this. Let's look and see how this changes things for us a little bit. 
So now, if we zoom out, we look at our whole track again, we can come up here and see that our bands changed a little bit here. So as we look in this corner, we can see we have green. And what is the car reading at this point? 0 0.06, and we get to 0 0.32. So that didn't help us too much. It was an idea of a, a way to look, and we can see yellow is up at 0 0.7. But we might be able to play with some numbers in here and get some bandwidths that we want that work out a little bit better. Um, if we, let's try to change this to say point, oh, let me get in here. We take this out, point one, let's see what happens. And sometimes your data analysis, as you start to look at things like this, it's gonna be playing a game like this to see what happens. That didn't help us at all. Uh, we can go in and we can maybe try specify the band the min and the max values. What do we get if we try that? And this is kind of the thing is when we start playing with data, sometimes it goes this way as we're trying to find these values. So we see maybe here using the graph isn't going to get us the information quite as much as we wanted as if we jump in the data. I'm going to set this back to smooth. I'm going to size it so we can see things again and kind of show that point is if we jump back into our data and, and look at the graph, this is where sometimes it's the working with both items that becomes really important. Let's put up a lateral acceleration here and we're gonna put it on its own graph. So now, if we look at it this way, more powerful than the map is we can say here, as we click, you can see I'm clicking at approximately 750 feet just under that where lateral acceleration goes from zero, where it was pretty much down the straight, to it starts to increase. Now, if we go in and look at that map, we can say this is the point where you really started turning. And because everything is dynamically linked, we can see that as those G-forces built, this is where it came through the corner. So sometimes, while we want to use the visual on the map, it may not be the best way to figure these things out. We could do that through this whole track. We can say um, this straight away here. Where did we turn in? It's really down here. And that coincides with what we see on the map. Um, so there's an idea for lateral acceleration. If we want to do the same thing with longitudinal acceleration, this is a spot I think the map works really, really well for a lot of people. As we click, left click again on the um, rainbow graph that goes along with the GPS map, and we say change this to, we have to find longitudinal acceleration in our map. We say apply and exit. Now what we have is a very powerful graph of braking. So if we go back up and we look at turn one again, and we start to zoom in here, we can see lateral, or I'm sorry, longitudinal acceleration. And it tells us right here, when it goes red is positive and yellow down to blue is negative. So yellow to blue is when we're actually on the brakes. Um, and as we zoom in, we can see here we have orange. This is acceleration. We're accelerating down that straight away. Um, we get into a little bit of braking, maybe some coasting or something going on here. It's minus 0.4 Gs. That's more than just coasting. Um, probably some brake action in there. And then we get a big hard brake application, come out a little bit, a more brake application, trailing off into the corner. Um, and then we start to pick up speed again. And we can look at that in all the spots. And again, I think this is a spot where looking at the data really helps. If we go into the data and we take out lateral acceleration, we put in longitudinal acceleration, we have a pretty bad color in yellow, it's not gonna show up. Let's change this to blue for now. Now we have a graph, we can look at these brake applications and see exactly where it started. And using our dynamic feature again, if we say turn one, where did we transition? Right about here, we see that location in our map and we can zoom in and see right where that point was, where we went from throttle to brake. Um, very powerful way to use the software, the dynamic linking capability, 
is something that makes a big difference. So when we see points in the graph and we want to say where on the track was it, we can get it. Uh, if we want to say, you know, where was the max breaking, the minimum longitudinal G, we have our blue triangle. We can click to that point and pick it up in our map as we zoom out to find it and say it's right here, this portion of the track. Um, I hope this is kind of showing people a little bit how the the two graphs are linked, how we can display different things on them. If you have some more questions about this, feel free to shoot me an email, matt at trailbreak.com. You can find me um, through trailbreak.com, through trailbreak.net, through the YouTube comments, um, any way that works to you. I hope it you reach out to me. I hope this helps you out in looking at your analysis a little bit, and I look forward to working with you. Thanks.